Good morning, second grade. Ms. Fogelman here for your lesson today. Let me get my screen shared. All right, so today is October the 19th and we are working again on addition and subtraction. Our learning target for today is that the student will add two two digit numbers with regrouping using a tens and ones chart. Before we begin, I wanted to show you a short video about um, using the tens chart. There we go. Becoming comfortable with two-digit and three-digit numbers is an important skill in second grade. Your child will master addition and subtraction problems within 1,000. But how your child learns to understand addition and subtraction is very important. Here's how you can help. 176 plus 45. How do we solve this? Let's make a helpful place value chart. We will break each number into hundreds, tens, and ones and represent them in each column. 176 is made up of 100, seven tens, and six ones. In 45, there are no hundreds, four tens, and five ones. First, we add the ones together. Six ones plus five ones is 11 ones. If there are 10 or more ones, then we bundle. Do you know how to bundle? Your child knows to bundle 10 ones together to make one 10. Now we have one one left. Next, we add the tens. Seven tens plus five tens is 12 tens. So we bundle again. A bundle of 10 tens make 100. How many tens are left? Two. Last, we add the hundreds. 100, 200. There are two hundreds. Do we need to make a bundle? Nope. Look, we just showed why 176 plus 45 equals 221. If you look closely, a place value chart is a helpful tool to use before your child uses the standard algorithm. The place value chart teaches your child why the standard algorithm works. How powerful. And that's good to know. Okay, so that gave you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be doing today. So let's go ahead and try it ourselves. I am going to stop my share now so that I can grab my pen. All right, so our question today says there were 42 birds in the pond, then 28 more came flying in. How many birds are there now? So there were originally 42, then 28 more came flying in. That means now they're there because they came into the pond. And then our question says, how many birds are there now? So the question is asking us that since there were 42 birds to begin with, 28 more came to the pond, how many birds are there now? So of course we're adding. And today to add, we're going to use our chart. Now we only have tens and ones today, unlike the lady on the video who also had hundreds. There are no hundreds in either of our numbers. So our first number is 42. So I'm going to use our sticks for our tens and in the number 42, there are four sets of 10. So that's why I put four sticks. And then there are two ones. Then in the number 28, 
there are two sets of 10. So I have my two sticks and then there are eight ones. And of course, we are adding them because we knew that the birds came flying in. So there's more birds there than they started with. So 42 plus 28. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I circle all 10 of the ones because they make a 10. We need 10 tens to make a 10. So that is zero ones now because there's none left. We circled all of them. And now there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of 10. So our answer is 70. Okay, so this, the nice thing about the tens and ones chart is that it keeps you very organized. You don't have your base 10 blocks float, floating all over the place. It keeps you very organized and neat so that you know what you are regrouping and making into a different place value. All right, uh, let's see what we have next. Let me clear my drawings and back to my mouse. All right, so our next problem is Miss Brown had 24 kids in her class. Then Miss Watson's class of 19 kids came to visit. How many kids are in Miss Brown's room now? Okay, so we know that Ms. Brown started with 24 kids in her class. Then Ms. Watson's class came to visit and they have, whoop, I was a little bit too big with my circle there, and they have 19. The question is now asking how many kids are in Ms. Brown's room now? So in order to figure that out, I have to take the 24 and add it to the 19 because the question is asking us, how many kids are there now that Ms. Watson's kids came to the classroom? So again, I'm going to use my chart. Here are my tens. Here are my ones. Okay. And I have my first number is 24. That's how many are in Ms. Brown's room. And in the number 24, there are two sets of 10 and four ones. Oop. And then our next number is the number 19. And in the number 19, there's only one group of 10, but there are nine ones. Always the one that Ms. Fogelman has a harder time drawing with her pen. Okay, and like we said, we're adding these two numbers together. Okay, so now we're going to add up our ones first. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Of course, we cannot have 13 in the ones place. So we're gonna make a group of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, and that group of 10 can now be made into a 10. We have one, two, three left in the ones place. And we have four groups of 10. So our answer is 43. Okay, so there are now 43 children in Miss Brown's room. All right, now um, let's review. All right, you will have an exit ticket that is called um, Word Problems in Seesaw. And you will do the question, but make sure you use a tens and ones chart. 
because that's what we are looking to make sure you understand. All right, and then using a tens and ones chart will keep your work neat. This way, when you are adding hundreds, tens and ones, you don't get confused. So um, this is really a way to make sure you're keeping your base 10 blocks neat. I've seen a lot of people who are drawing their tens and ones all over the board, and then it gets confusing when you're trying to count them. So using this chart will really help to keep your work neater. All right, make sure you get that work done in um, Seesaw, and I will see you soon.